Right, so let's do another really silly thing in a spreadsheet. Uh, so I've been looking around at various uh, bars and infographics and like, oh, well, someone did a bubbling looking one. I was wondering, could we, could we replicate that? And well, if we reduce this down a bit, we can see it's like a liquid emptying. Uh, not, not perfect by any means, but okay, that's, uh, that's fun. <laughs> maybe we, maybe we could uh, replicate something like that. So uh, let's, let's do this. Let's go onto a new sheet. And what I want, so I'm just going to write a 25 out of 50. So both uh, the numbers are now on here. So that's going to be actual value. This is going to be what it's out of. And first of all, I'm going to insert myself a stacked bar chart. Get rid of the title there. Uh, and I'm going to switch row and column so that they are definitely on top of each other. Um, and now if I let me change the chart type, come to combo, and I want to make sure they're both stack bar charts, but stick one of them on the secondary axis. Now, previously when I've done this, you stick the other one on the secondary axis uh, to render it in the background, but not this time. I'm gonna render this one in front. Now, before I do any of that, I'm going to set uh, the axes, so the vertical wants to be at 50, the other one needs to be at 50, so they are now the right height. I can delete those because I don't really need them. And now let's highlight something. So formatting the data series, I want to change the fill. So we can change it to a solid fill color, or I'm going to change it to a gradient color. And actually, the last gradient I used uh, is already in here, so let's just unpack what's going to happen with this, actually, no, I'll, I'll take it out and redo it from scratch. Uh, what I want is kind of some dark glass kind of color, so I'm gonna put a dark color there, an even darker color here, and then kind of a middling kind of color in the middle, I suppose, maybe a bit brighter. And then to the right, uh, I'm gonna make black. And then to the left, I'm gonna make white. So this is kind of how you would make a reflective surface. In general, you want kind of where your light is hitting is going to reflect really strongly uh, the light. So you put a white bit there. And the other side, we really want to get that like a reflective look. You want to put it reflecting kind of dark aspects of the background. So you put like a light thing there, dark squiggle there. And great, you've now got yourself a really nice reflective surface. Uh, not the end of the story for this. This is just going to be glass, but glass is transparent. So I'm going to increase the transparency a bit. Uh, drag this one up here to about maybe 80%. Yeah, about 80%. It doesn't matter. You can make this up, drag it by hand, free. Just do it by freehand. Do it until you like the look of it. And you can see this now a little bit more transparent. I'm not going to ramp the transparency up as much on these reflective bits, though, because that's the bit that's going to be like really visible. Maybe just move this back and forward just a little bit. Yeah, something like that will do. Oops. Something like that will do. Put that back on. I don't know how I've managed to accidentally take that bit off. There you go. And there you go. Well, basically, if you want to change the level of uh, your liquid here, well, there's 90% of it kind of done for you. Uh, what else am I going to do? For my data series, go to series one. That's the blue one. And I'm going to kind of put the same kind of gradient in, but I'm going to change uh, the color to a bit of a brighter blue, I suppose. Just kind of have a little bit of reflective light so the darkest patch doesn't go all the way onto the side. That's where it's going to be dark. You might have a bit of reflected light. Uh, and that's kind of how you make this look quite realistic. And you could mess with the transparency of your liquid as well. So what else? I had a meniscus type thing. Well, let's go select data, add a new series. I mean, we can name them to keep on track of it. And I'm going to add another one that says 25. Uh, now, that series is in here. But what I need to do is come back to chart design, change the chart type. And under combo, I want that to actually not be stacked. I want that to be a uh, scatter. So what you can see here now is there is a dot here. 
and we've got insert, I'm going to insert an oval and just kind of line it up roughly at about the right size. I mean, this is going to be another one of those things where you copy and paste an image in, so uh, make sure it's about the right size. There we go, it's sized up. I don't want uh, an outline, but I do want to kind of give it a bevel effect, I suppose. I can give it a basic bevel effect, and if I come to my options here, a little hexagon, it's under 3D format, I'll just make it less intense. You know, just a bit, a bit less. There we go. Maybe you can add a gradient to that. Um, doesn't really matter. I'm going to control X that, select the dot, paste it in. Now, if I increase or decrease that number, my meniscus is moving up and down as well. So there we go. That's most of it done. Uh, if we want to put a cap on it, the same thing under shapes. This cylinder shape here. And depending on where you do it, you might need to drag this little yellow handle down just to make it give it the same perspective. Because it could come there, in which case you've got kind of the wrong perspective. You want to drag that down. There you go, a little bit better. Now we fill that with a gradient. Well, we'll copy the same gradient as before. We can make it gray, whatever. Um, it doesn't matter. And I'll also add shape effects, shadow, just a drop shadow going straight down. There you go. So now we've got basically the cap to it. We can colour that uh, a different colour later. Maybe take the outline off. Now, now, what about the bubbles? Well, for this, I'm going to just put X and Y because it's going to be a scatter graph. Uh, and normally, when I do scatter graphs, I will usually title them X and Y no matter what, just kind of to remind me what's on the X and the Y. Uh, and I'm going to type in rand array. You can do this as just a random number generator. Uh, I want eight of them one column and the minimum value I'm going to make it uh, 0.9 and 1.1 integer false and on the Y I'm going to do rand array again eight rows one column the min I'm going to make it two or three and the max could be that number yeah, minus two or three We'll see in a moment why I picked those particular numbers. Now, chart, select data, add a new one. I'm going to call this bubbles. Uh, it's already going to ask for X and Y values. So this should add it immediately to the scatter proportion of it. So now if I rearrange this, what you can see, because I've made the maximum of the Y value just slightly less than this value, none of the bubbles are going to appear above the meniscus. What I'm going to do is, because there's one just there, I'm going to maybe make that minus three, and if I change it up and down, then maybe they're not going quite wide enough, so maybe I will change this 0 0.9 to 0 0.85, 1.15. Now you can kind of eyeball that, or you can put it together with something a bit more dynamic. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Now, how are we going to draw a bubble? Same thing as always, we're just going to insert a circle. I'm going to make it quite big just to so we can see it and deal with it for now. Uh, shape, we want a gradient. And I'm going to pick a radial gradient of some description. Shape fill gradient, let's go. More options. Uh, so type, yeah, make sure it's radial. My Bottom right, I want that to be light. I'm going to make them a little bit transparent. Maybe make that a lot darker. Great, so that's yeah, getting there. Uh, and if I close the fill and go to line, you can actually do a gradient line shape as well. I'm just going to make these really simple gradients, just two colors for these. You could make it more advanced, but I don't think there's much need. Uh, let's put this as an angle. I'll swap those around. So I've kind of got a dark area at the top and a light area at the bottom. Yeah, that'll probably do. Uh, and then if I add another circle here, I'm just going to fill that white with no uh, outline. Now you can make this as complicated as you like. Uh, because when you paste it into a graph, it just pisses as an image, so this doesn't need to be simple. 
So if I right click, group these, I've got my bubble there. I'm going to control C. Well, I'm going to reduce the size first because it's going to paste it in as a bubble that size. Let's see, do I want it about that big? Maybe not. Maybe I'm going to make this a little bit more transparent actually. Yeah, let's drive the transparency up. Don't want it to be. There you go. Then you can kind of see it's going to be. Yeah, that'll be fine for now. It's just an example. Control X, stack that, control V. And there you have some bubbles popping up and down. We can make it a bit lower, we can fill it up to the top, uh, the bubbles will chase it. So, <laughs> really, really silly thing, but all done with just like the very basic tools uh, available. Really.